Hi guys, I hope that you are enjoying your time at home, but also doing your work. <laughs> All right, so today, like I said, we're going to go ahead and talk about the art of ancient Egypt. So please pay attention. Tomorrow you're gonna have questions to answer. So on Monday, we talked a bit about prehistoric art, right? So I went over the Lascaux cave paintings, also the Chavot cave drawings and Altamira uh, caves. And I showed you some example of other places too, like in India and Argentina and also Indonesia as well. So all these are really old, right? You know, 28,000 BC, 15,000 BC, 40,000 BC, maybe even 100,000 BC. So we're going to skip ahead. And today we're going to go ahead and go on to uh, ancient Egyptian art, which is not quite as old, but it's still old, right? Like 5,000 years ago. Okay. Again, this these horses and stuff. So you guys, should, you should have already done your animal cave drawing, which was uh, the Tuesday assignment. If you haven't done that yet, please go ahead and do that. All right, so before we go on to Egypt, I did want to mention that uh, some of the earliest civilizations were in Mesopotamia, so in this area here in the Middle East. Um, and we, we'll just kind of skip over this. We won't talk about that. But I did want to mention that some of the earliest forms of writing uh, were in the Middle East. And the one you should remember, if you can, is cuneiform. Okay, And we'll talk about that at some later date. So ancient Egypt. Where is Egypt? It's located in the Nile River Valley in Africa. And usually it's divided into three different time periods, okay? The Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, New Kingdom, and also sometimes people divide that into the Late Kingdom as well. Uh, we won't worry too much about time period today. I just want you to be familiar with uh, some of the examples of ancient Egyptian art, okay? So who are the ancient Egyptians? In other words, what kind of people were they? Well, they were communities made up of mostly soldiers, slaves, priests, scribes, artists, and craftsmen, farmers and herdsmen, pharaohs and queens, and also gods and goddesses. I don't know whether they actually lived among the people, but they were very important. Religion was very important to these people, uh, and it had a big influence on their works of art. Okay, So here are some examples of their gods, right? You have Ra, the sun god, Osiris and Isis. Um, we won't really have time to go into the gods, uh, but just know that it, that religion had a big influence on art. And you often see these gods, these characters, in their paintings and sculptures. Okay. One other important thing we should mention, if you guys didn't know, is the pharaoh. So the leader was called a pharaoh, and the pharaoh was believed to be half man, half god. Okay. And the afterlife of the pharaoh, it's important in ancient Egyptian art. And you'll see, like, you know, kind of stories of what happened uh, in paintings and also in sculptures as well. So some of the different types of art that was created by ancient Egyptians. Uh, they made a lot of art, okay? Um, Egyptian people, they made statues, relief carvings, paintings, pottery, jewelry, sculptures, um, coffins as well, right? But most of the ancient Egyptian art was found buried in the ground or found in ancient Egyptian pyramids, which were tombs. Okay, so they would often, you know, leave lots of art, lots of jewelry, lots of things with the pharaohs when they buried them because they thought they, they would need them in the afterlife. Okay. So here are some examples of jewelry, which you won't really talk about today, but I just wanted to show you guys this. All right, so let's go on to statues and sculptures. Okay. So there is something called relief sculpture, okay? So relief sculpture is not like fully 3D. It's basically like slight carving in the walls, okay? And you can see what I mean. Um, it's just a little bit of card, maybe some indentations and stuff, um, almost like a painting, but yet there's a little bit of 3D. So if you were to feel the texture on the wall, you would feel the bumps and stuff, but it's not completely 3D. Here's another example of it. You know, these are carved into stone. Took a lot of work. All right, here are some examples of the coffins that they used and also the canopic jars. Uh, what the jars were for were for some of the organs. If you guys know about mummies, uh, then you know that they remove the organs 
except for the heart, uh, before the important people were buried. And they kept the organs in those little jars. There were always four of them. So uh, now we'll move on to like more actual sculpture, right? So 3D sculpture. So this is an example of, a, of uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it really well, Akin, Akinaton, okay? Uh, you can see the relief sculpture there, but I want you to focus on the actual sculpture there, okay? So he had kind of an elongated head, pointed chin, heavy lips, but notice how actual realistic it is, okay? And if you take a look at this sculpture of Nefertiti, she is really realistic, looks like, you know, pretty much a normal person, right? Uh, King Tutankhamun, right? You, you guys have probably heard of him before. And you can see the tomb, you can see the, the elaborate detail that is put into this. And this is made out of gold as well, okay? But again, very, very realistic, okay? And expensive. All right, so let's go on to painting, which is the main thing I wanted to talk about today. So uh, Egyptian art had a lot of different paintings, okay? And I want you to compare the difference between these paintings and those cave art paintings of animals and stuff. Now, of course, animals appear. Like if you look at the bottom, there are animals there, but also they appear as gods as well, okay? And this is what happened, this is the sophistication changed, right? So that, you know, the ancient Egyptians used more more stories, different types of scenes going on, uh, rather than the ancient cave paintings, who had a lot of different animals. Um, and there were some scenes, but you can see this is a lot more sophisticated. Now, what's interesting is that there are rules of Egyptian art. So throughout this time period, you know, a period of, what, 5,000 years, maybe less, uh, the actual style of Egyptian painting did not change very much, okay? So these are the rules. Every part of the body should be shown from the most familiar side, okay? So what does that mean? Well, the head was from the side, but you know the eyes and shoulders were shown from the front, okay? Uh, and every artist had to follow these rules. So it wasn't like, you know, um, there was only one artist who painted all of these paintings and that's why they look the same. No, they're actual rules, okay? So you had to paint people this way, uh, which is why it's so much different from a sculpture, right? The Egyptian sculpture, you could see it like, you know, it's very realistic all the way around. You know, if you were to walk around that, that bust of Nefertiti, right? You would see her face, you would see her head in, in very good detail. But here, the paintings, you're only shown, you know, the head from the side view, shoulders from the front view. Uh, the hands were very stylized. The feet were always from the side. These were strict rules. So what we call this is frontalism, okay? So this style of drawing, you know, people from, you know, side and front and side, uh, we call that frontalism, okay? Which makes Egyptian art so very interesting. So after looking at some of these examples, you can definitely see the front and profile views of these Egyptian figures, right? So let's go on and talk a little bit about the written language, right? So hopefully you guys already know, but if you don't, hieroglyphics is the written language of the ancient Egyptian people, okay? So hieroglyphics appear on the paintings, like, you know, in those, paintings that we just took a look at, right? Uh, they appear on tombs, on temple walls, statues, pap papyrus, which is paper, and even jewelry, right? Uh, the text could be read from left to right, right to left, up and down, depending on the way the symbol's faced, okay? So it's somewhat similar as uh, in the direction, I mean, to like Japanese, right? We can read Japanese from left to right, uh, right to left, up or down, depending on, you know, which way things are going. So how did people learn how to write hieroglyphics? Well, they would attend a special school to learn to read and write, okay? And there were special people who knew how to read and write these hieroglyphics and they were called scribes. 
So they used different type of things to make uh, these hieroglyphics, okay? So for example, they cut a plant called papyrus into thin layers, and then they cut it in strips, pounded them, and making it into like, uh, almost like a wallpaper. <laughs> and kind of stuck it up on there sometimes. Uh, and they also wrote on it with ink pens, and they also carved and painted hieroglyphics on tombs and temple wall walls. So if you guys don't know about the Rosetta Stone, you should probably look it up, but it's also very interesting. So the reason why we're able to read these hieroglyphics today is because uh, a long time ago, and this is in what, 1799, they discovered a stone which had three different texts, right? Uh, and each text says the same thing. So uh, that's how we know that, you know, hieroglyphics mean this is because of all these different texts uh, in Greek, demonic, and periodic, right? The hieroglyphics, right? So that's how we're able to decipher what the hieroglyphics mean, okay? So there's a, a couple of more examples of hieroglyphics. All right, so of course, you know, I couldn't end without talking a little bit about the pyramids, right? The pyramids, you can also consider art. It's a great example of architecture. Very difficult to build, and these took a long time, right? So right now, there are about 100 pyramids in Egypt, and it was built to be a tomb of the pharaohs, right? So I'm sure you've seen these in movies and stuff, but it's true. There were secret chambers in the pyramid to hold mummies. Uh, the coffins and all those special artifacts, right? Like the jewelry, uh, you know, those gold sculptures and stuff. Um, they were very important places. All right, so I talked enough about ancient Egyptian art and look on the Friday page and you will see the questions that you need to answer for this week, okay? Also, don't forget to do your cave drawing and I'll see you guys next week.